I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today, you're going to learn how to wire up a flight controller. Which flight controller? All of them, any flight controller. Today, we're going to learn how to wire up the ESCs. Welcome to video number two in my video series on how to wire up flight controllers. All flight controllers, that's right. Uh, instead of looking for the documentation for your specific flight controller, I want to teach you how to understand how a flight controller is laid out. They're all really similar. They have a few variances, but if you know what to look for, you can you can figure out how to wire them, wire them up without too much trouble. This is a series. There are some videos that came before this. Well, there's one, and uh, there's a link to the playlist down in the video description if you want to check them out. Today, we're going to be talking about wiring up your ESCs. And yeah, wiring up your ESCs is not the most complicated part of wiring up a flight controller, but there are some little nuances that I hope to share with you, and let's go ahead and dive right in. So here on screen, I've got a picture of two ESCs. I've got the MyAirBot Wraith 32. That's a new BL Heli 32 ESC. Uh, at least it's new as the time of this recording. And I've also got a Flyduino Kiss ESC. Uh, and uh, the first thing we're going to look at is there are three motor outputs on one end of the ESC. Usually the motor outputs are on one end of the ESC, and then the rest of the stuff we're going to talk about is on the other end of the ESC. Uh, so here are one, two, three motor outputs, and here's one, two, three motor outputs on the other side. And if you look at the ESCs, any ESCs, you'll see that's, that's how they tend to be laid out. Each of these motor outputs is for one of the three motor wires. A three-phase brushless motor has three wires going into it, and you might wonder, well, which of those pads goes with which of the wires? And it turns out it doesn't really matter. Uh, if you wire up the wires to the pads, the motor will spin one direction, and if you flip the wires, flip two, uh, any two of the three wires, if you switch them with each other, the motor will spin the other direction. So if you need to reverse your motors after you set up your copter, one way to do it is to go into the software in the ESC uh, and reverse the motor that way. And the other is to just take any two wires, it doesn't matter which, and swap them with each other and the motor will spin the opposite direction. The ESCs also need power, of course, and the ESCs are powered from battery voltage. They're powered directly from the voltage, so you're not going to give them 5 volts or 12 volts or anything like that. You're just going to feed them directly from the battery, and they'll typically have a positive and a negative pad, uh, on, typically on the other side of the board from the motor outputs. So here is the positive pad for the Meyerbot Wraith. That's where the red wire from your battery is going to go. Uh, you're not going <laughs> to... Obviously, you're not going to solder directly to the red wire on the battery. You're going to solder to your PDB. We'll talk about that in a second. But that's where the positive wire is going to go. And negative is going to be here. We can see this one is marked GN for ground. And here on the KISS, it's got a negative symbol. It almost it kind of just looks like a line. But you can see right here is the plus for positive on the KISS. And then stands to reason that the big pad on the other side is the negative. And you'll notice there's a common trend that the pads that we use for very high current applications like the motors or like the ESC power input or on the PDB or for the main battery voltage, they're great big thick pads. Whereas we've got these little tiny pads here for signal connections. They're not carrying very much current. They don't need very big pads. That helps you figure out what you're looking for. If you're looking for a way to wire up the power to your ESC, it's not going to be a little tiny pad. It's going to be a great big one. Now you're going to connect the ESC to the PDB. Uh, you're typically going to be building with a PDB as we talked about in the previous video. The PDB will typically have four sets of positive and negative pads that are intended for the ESCs. But some PDBs will have a single large positive and negative pad. Uh, as we discussed with the five volt pads in the previous video, the positive and the negative pads on the ESC are in parallel. They're all electrically equivalent is one way to think of it. And so we may take those pads and put some of them in the corner, uh, in one corner for one ESC and in the other corner for the other ESC, but there's no requirement. If you're willing to run a wire across the board, you can run all of the wires to the same pad. And that's how a few PDBs do it, but not many. Most of them will take four uh, positive and four negative pads and put one in each corner of the board for a quadcopter. You have to use the large pads on the PDB. As I said on the previous slide, the large pads are designed for high current. If you've got a PDB that has some kind of a small VBAT output for some reason, obviously don't use that for your ESCs. You'll, you'll, you'll smoke it. ESC pads are typically at the four corners of the PDB, but they're not always. Uh, it just depends how they've decided to lay them out. Uh, but more and more we see that, and that's what people like because it keeps the wiring neat. If there's no wires crossing the PDB, it's much neater. 
So here are two example PDBs, and I've called out the ESC output pads on each of them. Uh, here we've got positive and negative. One, two, three, four at either end. And here we've got positive and negative. One, two, three, four at either end. You can see they're marked positive and negative. Uh, that's, that's battery voltage, positive and negative. Uh, and they're great big honking thick pads. You'll notice here, for example, there's a smaller positive and negative pad in the middle here. That is not for ESCs. Do not solder up an ESC to that. It won't be able to handle the current. It'll get hot, the pad will lift, and the board will be damaged. That's for some other accessory device that wants battery voltage, like perhaps your video transmitter or, or something like that. The signal wire is where the ESC gets the motor signal from the flight controller. In other words, it's how the flight controller tells the ESC how fast it wants the motor to spin. And it's connected to one of the motor outputs on the flight controller. We'll take a look at that in a second. The signal pad on the ESC is often labeled PWM. You'll see here, you can barely read it, but it says PWM here. And you can barely read it, but it also says PWM here. It's often labeled PWM, even though we're not actually you. PWM is the old protocol that was used in fixed wings to talk to servos. And in the early days, it was also used to talk to multi-rotor flight controllers. But today we use things like one shot and multi shot and D shot. And that's not PWM, but this pad is still often labeled PWM. Now signal order matters. Flight controllers expect the motors to be in a certain location. And if those motors are not in the location that the flight controller expects, the copter will flip out when you try to fly. It'll just flip over, it'll spin, bad things will happen. It won't fly, let's just put it that way. So we can see here that clean flight and beta flight expect the motors to be number one is the back right, number two is the front right, number three is the back left, and number four is the front left. Uh, on the other hand, kiss and race flight expect the motors to be in a different order. They go clockwise, one, two, three, four. It doesn't really matter what the motor order is, but it has to match what the flight controller and the flight control software is expecting. I've got some example flight controllers here on the screen, and I'm going to show you where their signal wires are. So over here on the very far left, I've got an SP Racing F3, and on this one, the signal headers are all in a row. There's eight of them. It supports up to eight motors, and we can see you've got an S here, a plus. Well, it's a little covered up by the line, but there's a plus there and a minus there. So here's the signal outputs for the motor headers, one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. And there's positive for, for uh, five volts if you need it and negative for ground. Okay, so that's, you're gonna wire the motors up, one, two, three, four there for a quadcopter. Here, uh, the Rotor Geeks SSD is very similar. I just wanna show you another board with a similar layout. One, two, three, four, five, six. Here's the signal wires here. Uh, and likewise, five volts and ground. As I told you in the previous video, uh, if you've got a header like this, it's very likely that ground will be the row that is closest to the outside of the board. Uh, and we see that's true in both of these cases. Now here we've got a Furious FPV Radiance and its signal pads are labeled ESC one, two, three, and four. So yeah, so fine. Uh, you know, we've got different, uh, different name for the pads, but those are the signal pads and, and they're also in the four corners of the board. As you can see here, the board is actually upside down. Uh, that's why it goes one, two, three, uh, no, one, two, three, four. Where's the front? Oh, I see. No, 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 I see. Here's the front. So this would be the back right one, front right two. We gotta look at the front facing arrow that tells us which direction the board is intended to face. So yeah, their standard clean flight motor order. Here we've got beta flight, the beta flight F3. And here they're labeled M1, two, three, and four. M1, two, three, and four. And here on the Luminaire Lux V2, they're simply labeled one, two, three, and four with large numbers. Uh, in a case like this, it can be helpful to refer to the manual or documentation for the flight controller just to confirm if you're not sure what you're looking for. Now on boards where there's a built-in PDB, there sometimes can be some confusion as to which pads are for the power output to the ESCs and which pads are for the signal output to the ESCs. In both cases, there's four pads uh, and they're sort of in the corners of the board and it can be easy to confuse them. If, for example, we look at the Betaflight F3, uh, there are power, uh, power pads on the opposite side of the board, the underside from what we're looking at now, and it might be easy to get confused. Keep in mind that if the board has a built-in PDB, the power outputs are going to be much larger. And if you're really ever unsure, the positive power outputs will have battery voltage on, the, on them when the battery is connected to the board. 
whereas the signal ones will not have battery voltage. So if you get your multimeter out and you measure the voltage on the positive pad and you see 14 volts or 12 volts or whatever, then you know that's not a signal output, that's a power output. Some ESCs are gonna have a separate ground pad, a small one next to the signal wire pad. Uh, and the idea here is uh, some people think that if you take a ground wire and you twist it candy cane style with the signal wire, that it'll help fight and reject noise. Uh, and some other people disagree with that, and I'm not gonna weigh in on that right here, but if you have a signal ground, then you can use it. If both your ESC and your flight controller have a separate signal ground next to the signal output pad, then you could go ahead and use it. For example, if we go back and we take a look at some of these boards, notice that there's ESC2 here, and I believe there's ground right next to it. Likewise, here on the SP Racing, each of the signals has its own ground right next to it. Here on the Betaflight F3, we've got M1, and this is a ground pad right next to it. And likewise, on the Luminaire Lux. So many flight controllers you're going to find, in fact, I dare say most flight controllers are going to have a signal ground. And if your ESC also has one, go ahead and use it. Just make sure that you twist the signal wire and the ground wire together. Otherwise, you're not getting whatever hypothetical benefit there might even be. But if you find that your ESC or your flight controller or your PDB doesn't have a separate ground for the signal ground, then you can just run a signal wire by itself and it'll probably be fine in most cases, especially because our flight controllers, our, our quadcopters rather, use really short wires. So the kind of noise that the signal ground is meant to help with isn't as big of an issue for us. A few ESCs also have a telemetry output. Uh, this is most prominent today in the KISS ESCs. And the idea is that the ESC can communicate things like RPMs, motor RPMs, and, and current draw to the flight controller. Uh, and right now, KISS actually has the ability to, to get telemetry from all four ESCs. It can record the actual motor RPM in flight uh, and the current draw. You don't need a current a separate current sensor on a KISS build because the ESCs, if you're using KISS ESCs, of course, the ESCs report current to the flight controller and it just adds it up. Uh, BL Heli 32 is intended to have that feature at some point in the future, but it, at the time of this recording, BL Heli 32 is only just now starting to hit the market, and it, that, that feature hasn't been developed yet. Um, so if you have uh, KISS ESCs, then there's going to be a separate telemetry pad on your KISS flight controller for each of the four ESC telemetry wires. I'm just going to wire it up. Uh, for beta flight, it's still to be determined exactly how it's going to be done. And that is going to bring us to the end of this video, uh, definitely one of the shorter ones uh, in this series, uh, because there's not as many intricacies with uh, soldering up the ESCs as there are with some of the other things. But there's still a few little quirks in here that I hope you learned, uh, and I hope you stay tuned for the next video. The next video, we're going to talk about wiring up your receiver. And yeah, there's a lot of quirks and intricacies with the receiver, with S-Bus and I-Bus and Serial and PPM and Inversion. Yeah. Um, if this one was a little short, I'll definitely make it up on the next one. But for now, hope you enjoyed it. Hope it was educational, and happy flying.